Hi, I'm Stuart J. Perlman. I'm sitting outside Ann Royer's house here in McKinney, waiting for an 11.30 appointment with Ann. She's not answering her phone, she's not answering her door, but I hear a dog barking, so maybe there's life inside. He thinks maybe she forgot our appointment? Welcome to Stuart J.'s Lens. Originally, I'm a Midwesterner. Well, you don't have to apologize. Well, but I grew up in Austin. Well, so. the goal, you grew up in Austin, but you're a, a Midwesterner from where? Indiana. Indiana. I'm a Hoosier, yeah. You're a Hoosier? Evidently. <laughs> and, <laughs> I get that good Midwestern work ethic. When I went to school in, in uh, uh, middle school, I started out right in the Round Rock School District. My dad died, and my mom and I went to Japan for a year. So it was just the two of us. My brothers were older and all doing their own thing. My dad had just died, and she thought there's a need in Japan for mission, missionaries who have great music talent. She had great music skills, let's say. So she did a lot of work in an, um, a mission school that taught English in Kobe. And I went to... Good beef there. Yeah, very good beef. I don't think we ever tasted it. We were on a missionary salary, so that was not <laughs> on the agenda. In Japan, I had the perfect time to begin to heal, even as a 12-year-old, I could walk anywhere in that city. And my school was up at the top of a mountain. It was in the foothills of Doko Mountains. It overlooked Kobe Harbor. It was beautiful. And I spent many hours just walking the streets of Japan, the streets of Kobe, and up and down that mountain alone, and just thinking and developing. This was your therapy? Uh, yes, and I don't realize came back to Austin, there was a, an artist there named Gustav Lee Kahn. And he and my mom went way back. She'd never but met him, always wanted to. In short order, her hairdresser, who was also a sculptor and painter, said, would Annie please model for me? I'm studying portraiture with Gustav Lee Kahn. And so, of course, my mother said, well, of course. And at that time, I was like, my mom made all my clothes. I was like this little European princess version, and he fell in love with me, and sat from down him. He would go from canvas to canvas and, and make comment and critique, it's the old master's way, old studio way. Well, he sat down in front of Marion's canvas and finished the whole painting of me, start to finish. But he wasn't finished in one session, so when my mom came to pick me up, he turned to her and he said, would you bring her back? I need to, I need to finish. Well, of course, you know, of course I will. So the next week, he finished the pen. Then he handed the canvas to my mom. Wow. I know. And then he said to her, will you bring her back for lessons? And I studied with Lee Khan on and off um, until I hit junior high, and then I studied with him nonstop after Japan. And he always called me my little Japanese woman because... I seem to recall the first time I met you that we had a discussion and you walked out the door and I said, oh my God, she <laughs> she has eight degrees. I do not. I don't have to That's what I remember. that down to the reality. Okay. okay. McKinney came on my radar screen because I went from Austin, Texas, to Austin College up in Sherman. Okay. And at that time, in the lower 80s, McKinney was the McDonald's. On the way to Sherman. <laughs> I went to Austin McKinney College for four years, have a... Uh, Double majored in religious studies because I love Old Testament and love biblical studies and visual arts, and then went to Yale Divinity School from there because I went to study with Brevard Childs, arguably one of the greatest minds at that time living in Old Testament. They had a degree program on religion and the visual arts. For anybody who knows academics, two semesters, four hours a week and he'd walk in with a pile of notes like this for every lecture. So it was just so meaty. And it was a great degree plan, and I came out of that with a, a terminating master's degree, which essentially means it's economically useless. 
So then I thought, well, what am I going <laughs> to do with this? I was a student student. I always was. High school, college, I was always the top student. I love studying. I love a library. I love books. I love thought. I love lectures. I love dialogue. So to find out that I could go from one master's degree to the next program was so exciting. And it was all almost fully funded. I stayed within the system and I went to an East Asian Studies degree. Because I thought, well, I've got to redeem that Japanese. And gee, I think I'd like to go back to Japan and serve. And so I went into East Asian Studies. I majored in East Asian Art with a priority or focus on Japanese art. And then I um, studied the language, which has always been my nemesis. I applied for a PhD program in art history because I had been schmoozed by that department. They thought... That's a Japanese expression? Schmoozed? I don't think so, oh, okay. but I had been... So I got in because I was at the top of their list, and so I was a full-paid scholarship. And me being me went, oh, look at the smorgasbord of things I can study. So I studied everything. Um, I had been developing this art, this uh, decorative painting business. Got to work in fabulous homes. I have a just a wonderful portfolio of projects that I'd done while I was a graduate student. Kept the 4-0 and also had a thriving business. And so when I when I dropped the the day I thought. I'm not going to go back. I went out and got a DBA and started SAR design for for real, for real, and went full board. I was doing work all up and down the eastern seaboard, which was great because people there have a sense of history. And they live in their homes like forever and pass their homes on to their children. And they, they want their artwork to stay on the walls for they decades. Want full scale murals. Well, that's where the art history came in. I could paint a Art Nouveau mural, I could do Art Deco, I could do Japanese, Chinese, French Provincial. I'd study all of that. Now all I had to do was use the paint. I'd been painting for all those years. It was just this perfect match. And I'd work like 60 hours a week just loving it. And at a certain point... What year are we now? 96. 96, okay. 96, 97. And it was, it was not the time to get into the decorative painting business. I mean, I did a little bit. I did some really great homes down in Dallas, but it was hard to do that. Um, for a, a I mean, part of being in business is just understanding business cycle. And mm -hmm. it, was, it was the wrong, wrong time for me. I was too much of a new Then Carolyn Hewitt came to me and said, you want to do some summer classes for kids? And I said, yeah, I know. They said, we don't want to stop. Can't you teach in the fall? Music to my ears. So I started developing that, and I teach it. So that's why I hunkered down and, and made um, studio teaching my focus. And, and it grew. And it really grew. And suddenly I was teaching nearly full time. It was a wonderful thing. And then that if you think you have a story to tell, send me an email. But I have to tell you up front, it better be good. <laughs>